Hello everyone, welcome to this brand new video series. This is kind of the first time I've done anything like this, but I put a poll out on the community tab and a lot of people seem to have wanted this, so today I'm going to take you through the basics of train simulator route building. Now, here we are, in our route. As you can see, there's not much around, as of yet. So this is where we begin. So first off, become familiar with moving route, use the arrow keys to manoeuvre around. Um, use your mouse to look around, go forward, left click to select things, right click to look around. So here's your dashboard. This is play, this is to start the route. Um, this is to lock the route. Then here's your first set of panels. Um, movement, rotation and scale. You can edit all of these respectively. Here we have the snap to, to terrain option. We don't need to cover that yet. What you want to focus on is these two tabs here. They pop out from the side. Here you have your main toolbox which has object tools, linear object tools, painting tools and scenario tools. For starting track laying we're going to want linear object tools which as you can see it brings up a lot but we're not going to access any of these yet. What we're going to do is we're going to go to this panel. As you can see there's a lot of options but to start off we're just going to want to click on this one which is track all. Here you can select any type of track you want. Personally, I used West Coast Mainline track, but this isn't required in any way, shape, or form. If if you want to access something but it isn't here, it's most likely because it's not selected. Here you can observe the small square, and there's the object set filter. If you tap on this, a new box will appear on this side with all of the options you want. You want to select DTG, because this is the original game developer and where you'll find most packs. In this case, we are going to use West Coast Mainline South, which may take a second. We're going to use West Coast Mainline South and Cross City today. Now you'll see that the options of those tracks have shown up. Today I'm going to use West Coast Mainline Track Classic. So first thing you want to do is you want to left click. Here you'll see two arrows appear, or most likely one arrow. And what this is, is where you're going to place the track. The way you can edit the amount of arrows is if you come down to this section, you can change the track rule, snap, snap to track, snap to terrain, a manual or automatic junction, select follow network, or allow easements. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with two tracks, but you can edit the amount of tracks you can here. So we're going to start with a double track line and we're going to have snap to track off for now. What we're going to do is we're going to create a simple line of track. Straight straight line. Right there. As you can see, the track has been laid down and everything seems alright. It is balanced and then if you wanted to add more track or a junction, it snaps. So you can keep it going if you so wish, or you can divert off of the track. Now, here we're going to learn how to do curvature. Fairly easy this one, just you can simply curve in any direction you want. And if you want to increase the intensity of the curvature, up here you can define all of the track. You can change the speed limit, so we're going to make it on this bit of track 30 30 for passenger and 20 for freight and we're going to change the line to passenger but the other options you have is yard which is extremely tight freight which is fairly tight and the one we're going to use today passenger which has a fair curve on it before we were using the main line option so now we have our curvature track and as you can see we have extended off of that this is now our junction. So now you have the basic track laying down. Next we're going to make a junction. In the first case we're going to have a diverging junction which is simply going to divert off of the track but we're going to want it to look linear so we're going to use the easements tool right here. You do the same when you select the track, but instead of it doing you doing it manually, it creates it for you and makes smooth junctions. 
You don't have to use this as an option, but I find it makes the bell track look a lot smoother and a lot more realistic. So now we have two junctions. So, now we see this junction has been built. Looks like a very good junction. And as you can see, here we are using manual junctions, but in the case if you want an automatic junction, which we shall do in a minute, you can, of course, select the tick box down here and change it to a manual junction. Now, to show you the other type, we're going to have a crossover junction. For this junction, it's going to be a manual junction. So we're going to uncheck that box and we're going to check snap to track. That's important, you need to have snap to ch track checked. We're going to set the set speed limit to 15 miles an hour on both lines and we're going to make it yard. And in this case, you can also change if you want it to be overhead wires, third rail or none. You can also change the track rule here. Now, on this bit of track, we're going to snap click down and we're going to pull out and we're going to get to around here then we're going to click and then we're going to try and drag out and as you can see it's trying to snap on to this bit of track now if you click you have now made a junction crossing over to both tracks and you can also move around the junction box as you please if it goes into an awkward position like it just did so that's one type of making a junction, but there is also another type of making a junction, as we're going to see here. So firstly what we're going to do is we're just going to pull this line out a little bit further, so we have more space to work with, as you can see. The other type of way of doing it is once again set the track to 1, but you do not need the snap to track on this time. What you do is you navigate to this part here, as you can see. This is where most of the control panel happens, and we'll look at this in later videos fully. But for now, all you want is the crossover button. So what you need to do is you need to tap that button once, and nothing seems to be happening, and then you have to go back to the track and click it. And all of a sudden, you'll see these red lines appearing. What you're going to want to do is you want to find a good spot, and just tap down. As you can see, you can automatically build a junction here. So we're going to put that one there, and there you go. So now, we're going to work on making uh, a gradient climb, and you can also make a gradient descent. So, what we're not going to do is we're not going to set this to 1, because the smaller the number, the steeper the gradient, and as you can see, just a completely unrealistic uh, jettison up to space, and no one's going to enjoy that. So I'm going to set it to around 100, that's what I'm usually comfortable with, as we can see. Um, so this will give you a very fair climb. As you can see, it's not overbearing, but it will definitely get you up fairly quick. Uh, so we're just going to um, go a little bit far, as you can see, and then we are going to level it off around here. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to set this back to zero, as you can see. We'll also work with terrain next time, so the track won't be floating. Um, but this is just the beginning, so we don't need terrain just yet. As you can see, it completely goes up, but you might notice that it might sometimes be a little bit of a sharp um, jettison up, and especially if you're going fast or slow on a train, you're definitely going to notice that, and it could be a bit um, aggravating. So what we what we can do is we can use the gradient tool, and what you do is you select the point. Sometimes they place down automatically, sometimes they don't. Um, paste the, you see it locks in. Place the points here. Then what you want to do, gonna do is you're gonna hold down control and press one, and then keep holding down control and press the other one. And now you're selecting both of them. Then what you're gonna, gonna do is you're going to just pull up ever so slightly, and that will help ease off the junction. And that will help ease off the gradient, and it means that it's much harder to tell when you start going up, and just makes it a more smooth and realistic experience. So now we can save our changes and we can fly around. If you hold down shift, you can move a lot quicker. It's very helpful if you're trying to go long places. You can see our own junction here. You can change the set of the points by pulling these handles and it will change the direction of the points and similar to the manual junction. So we're just gonna take some power if you'll let us, there we go. So as you can see, the train is running perfectly fine on our track. 
Now we want to adhere to the speed limit, as you can see. So we'll only be going around 30, but I do think I was a bit generous with that. I think I might need to slow this down a little bit. So we're going to stop at 20 miles per hour. Just take it off and power up. So there you go, we pass over the junction with no problem. As you can see, and then we'll see our junction coming up here. Which we should pass over just fine. But either way, it is set in the right direction. And then we will pass across this junction and then we will go up our gradient that we have made. As you can see, it's all going well. And you'll think it does look a bit bland at the moment, but don't worry, we'll soon change that. As you see, our train's coming across just fine. And now we can pop the speed a little bit. Passes over our junction with no worries at all. And now, we are to pass over our small junction. Now, I don't think I set a speed limit for this. I think it's 90 miles an hour. But either way, we'll be able to demonstrate that we've pulled the right junction. And now, as you can see, we are flawlessly crossing the tracks. And now we are at our gradient. As you can see, we tried to smoothen it off. And yep. Seems pretty flawless to me. As you see, we'll start we'll start dropping speed a lot faster now. Hence why you have to be very careful about how steep your gradients are. Your train needs to be able to withstand the gradient because sometimes train simulator physics can be a bit hard. But anyway, that is our first on looking to train simulator track building. And it seems that we've made a pretty good track circuit already. Hopefully you'll be able to join me for my next episode, which will be signalling and scenery. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.